Cheers, darlings! This is Metaton here, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! Now, the producers have kind of stepped in and finally told me, Metaton, you can't make an entire show where all you do is build things to be blown up and destroyed without knowing a lick about space and science. Well, darlings, I fired those producers. But at the same time, I kind of thought that they were right, so I decided we are going to switch things up and go straight into training. Now how hard could it really be to get something up into space and keep it there? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out here. So I say that we kind of get going with the very basics here. Now what we actually do, I guess we'll kind of find out, but uh, yeah, you got to kind of see all the good stuff here. Now bad stuff, you'll probably see plenty of that too. But in the meantime, stay tuned for more action, more drama, and of course, more bloodshed. I wouldn't have it any other way, darlings. Okay, so basic construction. Welcome to today's lecture on vessel construction. I'm Wermner von Kerman. Whether you want to put a satellite into orbit, make a transcontinental flight, or step onto the very surface of the moon. The moon? Darling, it's called a moon. You're going to need to build yourself a ship. It should be pretty easy, even if you're not a famous rocket scientist such as myself. Well, darling, what if I'm a famous superstar such as myself? Well, I guess let's find out how easy it might be. We are now at the Kerbal Space Center. I'll give you a quick rundown of how to get around. The KSC, for short, is home to the pinnacle of Kerbal Endeavor and achievement for the space exploration. Using the facilities you can see here, you will be able to manage your space program, create rockets and planes, track your Kerbal explorers as they roam the solar system, find exciting new uses for explosive substances, and in case of emergency, hire more Kerbals. Take some time to hover the mouse over the buildings and see what they each are. And when you are ready, enter the vehicle assembly building. Okay, so let's see here. We have the research and development, where all the nerds are going to be. The Astronaut Complex, where the Fit Nerds are going to be. Administration Building, where the Pencil Pushers are going to be. We have the Space Hangar, where all the cool stuff is going to stay. The Vehicle Assembly Building, where we build said cool stuff. And what's this over here? This is the Tracking Station, where all the nerds nerd out about what all of the cool stuff is doing. And the Launch Pad, where we send all the cool stuff up into space. And this is the Runway where we send cool stuff not into space but at high speeds out at other objects. Fascinating, darlings! Okay, so, I mean, it's pretty much self-explanatory what each of these are going to do. I could read all of that, but who needs that? I don't do anything along those lines. No, darlings, we're going to get straight into the vehicle assembly building. Very good! What you see in the middle of this screen is a construction area. This is where parts are placed and your craft is constructed. On the left side of the screen is the parts toolbox. We'll show you all the parts you have available in each of the different categories. Once there are any to pick, that is. If you want your craft to be controllable, you'll need a command module, and it's best to make it the first part you place. This part will either contain some plucky Kerbal crew, or an automated pilot mechanism. As we're just starting, there's only one choice. Go ahead and pick that command module from the pods tab. Okay. After at least one part is placed, you can look around with the following controls. And there's the controls. Okay, if you'd like your pilot to be able to make more than one flight, he or she will have to return safely to the ground or water on Kerbin. Parachutes are a simple way to make sure that this happens. It can be found on the Utility tab. And where's the Utility tab? Uh, excuse me? Sir, where's the Utility tab? When choosing parts, you can view the details of parts available by hovering over them in the toolbox. When the info is visible, most parts have an additional information window which can be opened with a right click. Note the parachute states how large its effective diameters are and what the maximum speed for deployment is. Go ahead and select the M16 parachute by left clicking on it. Then move it to the top of the command pod so that the green sphere at the bottom of the parachute lines up with the green sphere at the top of the pod. Click again to attach. Uh, we'll say this. And then that. Okay. Next. Good. Some parts, like our parachute here, have configurable options. To see these, we need to right-click on the parachute we just attached to the pod. Do that now and you'll see the available parameters. Okay. Uh, I can't really see it with your freaking face in the way. Get out of my way, pal. 
Okay. Altitude, minimum pressure. Okay. On a parachute, you'll see that we can adjust our altitude and the atmospheric pressure at which to open. That setting can be quite useful on distant worlds. For now, let's check that the opening height of the chute is at least 1,000 meters. Good. Because safety is the Kerbal Way, after all. For the minimum pressure slider, move it all the way to the right at 0.075. Okay. This setting prevents the chute from activating until the atmospheric pressure is about the configured value. A Kerbin 0.075 is about 2 kilometers in altitude. So even if you stage early and arm the parachute, it will wait until then to activate. You can hide these options by right clicking on the background, scene, or picking up another part and available. Next up, we are going to need something to make us go. Click on the engines tab on the left to show the available engines and solid rocket motors. Grab one and connect it to the bottom of your pod. You may need to zoom or move the camera around to be able to do so. Okay, so we have apparently just a solid fuel booster. Okay. Okay, so... <laughs> Oops, I forgot you're just starting out. You're not a famous rocket scientist. And to make that craft survivable well, as it stands, you'd have to be better at rocket science than me. Ha! Ah, impossible. Well, darlings, there's nothing as impossible. I swear, I'm going to start my new career in rocket science. Whoever thought about that, huh? Famous flying astronaut star robot in space! The problem with that craft is that this solid rocket is too powerful for the payload. A single small pod and a chute will either burn up on ascension and going too fast, or burn up coming back down. Even if you survive that, the craft's mass will cause it to fall too fast for the parachute to operate properly. You'd hit the surface before it could stop you. Okay, I promise to teach you how to change that to make it work in a later tutorial, but for now, let's continue. At least this way I get to tell you about the removing parts. Pick up the BAC thumper and either drop it back over the parts tool or press the lead. So I guess that? Okay. Instead, let's add the solid motor that's a better match for the ship of this size. At the start of your career, you will have what I consider rubbish parts. Literally. The motor here looks like, and may well be, a converted trash can. That said, it does have enough oomph to get this little craft moving skyward, and quickly. As you progress, you will be able to unlock more engines and other parts. For now though, let's just pick up the RT-5 flea and connect it to the bottom of the pod. Okay. Nice one! You've built the simplest survivable craft possible. We could launch it from the pad now, but it might be safer to explain one other thing. In the bottom right, you will see the staging stack. It's a box with the number zero and icons for the parachute and engine in it. This stack shows us which parts will be activated as we stage our rocket. What this shows is that when we activate the next stage, both the engine and the parachute will be triggered. While it could be considered funny to open the chute and fire the motor at the same time, it's not going to give you much of a flight. To fix this, we'll need to separate the engine and the chute in two stages. If you mouse over the zero stage, you will see a little plus and minus appear on the left of the box. Click the plus and button and add a new stage. If you add too many, click the minus button on the extra one to remove them. Make sure you have precisely two stages. Okay. We want two stages. Okay. So, do I then click them and drag them? Uh, okay, so that's why they meant. Gotcha. Excellent! It's important to note that the stages activate from the highest number and then count down. So our first stage will be stage 1, the engine, and our second stage will be stage 0, shoot. Now drag the engine icon from stage 0 down to stage 1 to give our pilot some comfort. Okay, so I kind of need to, I guess, to go this direction. Gotcha, okay. Interesting to know. Alright, good to know. That's it! We now have a safe, well, relatively safe craft that's ready to go. Let's make sure that if we need this design again, we don't have to build it all from scratch. At the top of the screen, you will see the name of our craft. Hmm. Untitled spacecraft doesn't seem so majestic. Why don't you change that to be something more your style? You could add a description if you'd like. When you use the load screens later, these names and descriptions help you grab the right vessel. When you're happy with the name, click on the save icon in the upper right. Okay, so that's the save icon. Good. Metatons flying foot. Flying boot. Let's we'll call it Metatons flying boot. How about that? 
I think that's gonna be fabulous. We just need it to be all in pink and sparkly and glamorous. All right, so uh, save. Let's, do I need to give a description to? No description needed, darling. Okay, so save. Excellent work. Feel free to play around with the parts and techniques I've shown you. When you're ready to continue, press the red button in the upper right to exit. Okay, so I'd say we just go ahead and leave that. And let's fly this tiny, tiny, tiny little rocket called Metaton's Flying Boot. Uh, training, scenarios, uh, basic flight. Welcome to the Kerbal Space Center launch facility. I'm Gene Kerman, and I will teach you the basics of piloting a spacecraft. I trust that you've already checked the basic construction tutorial. If not, I recommend you do so before going through this one. Today we will do a run through of all the important controls for your spacecraft. Our little hopper from your basic instruction lesson with Werder may not have all of them, but we'll do a full run through once and see how it flies. If you're ready to go, press next. Flying a spacecraft is all about being in control of a generally very chaotic situation. As a pilot, your main flight controls will affect the pitch, yaw, and roll of the ship. Let's look at those first. All other controls will be locked until they're needed or this tutorial is closed. Pitch, yaw, and roll are all the three directions you will rotate your craft. To help you visualize these, we've taken a holiday snap of the popper below. Next up, we'll see how we rotate in these directions. You control your ship's rotation using these controls. By controlling pitch, yaw, and roll together, you can keep this ship in a controlled flight. Try it now. Notice the indicator on the lower left side move as you provide control input. Throttle plus pitch, yaw, and roll are the main controls you need to master for a successful crash-free flight. We'll skip over the throttle control for now as this vessel has no need for it. Don't worry, I'll explain it in another time when it's of use. Remember that all of these controls have a limited amount of effectiveness, so bigger, heavier ships will probably respond much more sluggishly to the controls than a little small one. It's also good to keep in mind that stages are separated from the ship. It will become lighter and this will usually mean easier to control. Next, let's look at the rest of the flight controls. In flight, all the planning you put into staging sequence of your ship comes into play. From launch to the final deployment of the descent parachute, you can control the activation of several of the ship's parts by activating staging. Notice the stage indicator in the lower left corner. It shows a currently active stage. Since we haven't launched yet, it's showing the first stage is active. I have your staging controls locked for now so the staging indicator is glowing purple. One more thing on staging. If the staging setup is causing strife, or you change your mind about something, you can edit the stage sequence on the fly. Unintended. No need to go back to the assembly facility. An important part of flying is knowing how your ship is oriented and where it's going. That's why a good pilot is always aware of the ship's altitude where it's pointing, and a velocity vector where it's going. These aren't always the same direction, and as your skills improve, you should pick up on it. The big round instrument in the lower center of the screen is called the navball. This device sums up most of this critical information needed for the proper, death-free flight. Here you see the ship's nose in relation to the horizon. When you're not pointing straight up, it's easily visible as a straight line between the blue sky and the brown ground, as well as its heading compass bearing, and speed. You also get several icons to indicate things like your current velocity vector, but we'll have a look at those later. Okay, enough talk. I'll unlock the flight controls and you'll be clear for launch. At any time you may press escape to pause the game, in the pause menu you can restart the flight or end this tutorial. Choose end scenario and return to the main menu. For now, get yourself prepared and hit space when ready to launch. Don't forget our hopper has only solid rocket fuel motors, so there is no throttle control. That is why we didn't review the throttle here. Okay, so that's interesting to note. I did not know that. Okay, so I guess ready, steady, and three, two, one, launch. Whoa! Holy flight! And up you go. You can try practicing some of the controls we just discussed, like pick, yaw, and roll. Also, keep an eye on the parachute icon in the staging list. Remember not to stage it when the background is red. Realize that this could be too much to learn in one go, so if you forget, you can always press escape and click the view key bindings for a reminder. 
can also see where your crew are enjoying the trip in the lower right corner. Anyways, I'll hang around and watch. I'll let you know when it's safe to stage your shoot. Okay. Uh. Wee! <laughs> whoa! 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 Wow. Okay, so now I see how this all works down to the bottom, but. Man, this is kind of hard to. All that. Let's get it pointing back up, 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 please, up. Oh, now we're kind of gliding around here. We're falling, that's what we're doing, okay. Good to know, and... Valentina Kermit is going crazy! <laughs> I'm to put some spin on this baby! <laughs> okay, okay, let's not make her puke too much, I think. The speed is low enough that it's safe to stage. Okay, let me sit back and enjoy the descent. Uh, right? It's gonna, I guess, go on its own? Okay, good. Wait. And, there we go, whoop. Ha ha ha! Look at that, darlings! I am falling safely to the ground now. Flying through the air! Just like I don't care, but for you, only you, darlings, I shall fall for you. That is a little preview of my newest song and newest musical, Metaton in Space! And oosh! Oh, yep, we don't explode. <laughs> okay. Well done. You've survived your first quick flight and are rolling around a lot. Okay. When you're not landed or splash on Kerbin and not in training, you can point to the mouse just above the altimeter and click the recover button on the panel that slides down to ask to be picked up. Okay. Also unlock the crew hatch. So if you feel like going out for a walk or a swim, you can click the EVA, extra vehicular activity button that will pop up when the mouse is over the portrait of the Kerbal. So, okay, that right there. This concludes today's lesson. To exit training, you press escape to access the pause menu and choose end scenario to return to the main menu. Hope to see you again to learn more about suborbital flight, perhaps. Bye-bye! Hatch is obstructed, can't exit. Well, how about we do this? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Wee! I don't even know how this is happening. But I am not gonna exactly fight with it. There we go. Okay. So, can I evacuate now? Now I can. Uh, let's see. Let go. Space. There we go, Valentina! Go forth! Adventure! Onto this strange foreign land called Detroit. There is no life seen for miles. Signs of existence that once happened can be found. But nothing but destruction is left in its wake. <laughs> I just love my brother's face there. He's like, ah! Who made bad dreams? <laughs> okay. Let's go in here. Um, is that is... Mr. Boom. No, thank you. I want to keep Guppy's head, because that makes the most sense. Um, anger, or... Uh, I'm going to go with Code Anger. There. Back speed up is definitely going to be worth it. Okay, we did get money, too.